We have a brand new raid event for two of the most popular Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, Armor Rouge and Serilege. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can solo both of them with almost no effort whatsoever. We got a lot to talk about, so let's get started. How's it going everybody? Blaine here for Bridge 4 Games. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me. As I mentioned in the intro, we have a brand new event going on right now to get two really awesome Pokemon. Armor Rouge and Serilege. Now, these Pokemon are not only really awesome, they're really difficult to evolve. It just takes a lot of time to actually KO all the Pokemon and get the items, so having these Pokemon be very accessible in a raid is something that's going to be very, very awesome for a lot of players. Now, they are both really awesome, but they can be really tough, which is why I'm going to show you six Pokemon right now that are going to be able to take both these Pokemon down, no problem. Now we have an awful lot to talk about and I can't wait to share these awesome Pokemon with you guys. So we're going to go ahead and get started and dive right in. But before I do, I just want to take a second to ask if you like the videos we have here on the channel. Please make sure that you actually like them by hitting that thumbs up button. And of course, consider subscribing because it really does help us out. And you'll make sure you never miss any of our awesome videos just like this one. So thanks in advance. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the details of the raid so we know exactly what we're up against. Alright guys, now as you can see, the event is going on right now. It did begin at 0000 UTC on the 3rd. However, for people like us in the U.S., myself, I'm being in the Eastern Time Zone, that does mean that the event is going to be starting at 7 p.m., so obviously if you're watching after that point, it's already begun. Now, the event is going to go until Sunday, which is going to be the 5th, and obviously if you are in the U.S. again, that does mean it's going to be ending Saturday night instead. So you are going to want to make sure you go ahead and take down the Pokemon and catch them by then, so you don't miss out on this awesome opportunity. Now, that being said, talking about the Pokemon themselves, they are going to be showing up in both 4 and 5 star raids, and kind of like some of the other events we've had in the past, they can have really any different Terra type. They could be Bug, Fairy, Ice, whatever. Now, even though they can make them a little hard to prep against, they do tend to have a very select amount of moves that is going to make it very easy for us to figure out how to take them down. Now, looking at Armor Rouge, it is going to only be showing up in the Scarlet games for this event. So that means like if your game naturally had Armor Rouge, you're not going to be able to get Serilege in your raids for this event. That being said, if you do go online and participate in raids with somebody else, you will be able to get both of them pretty much no problem, so you don't have to really worry about that. As long as you have an online subscription, you can get both of these Pokemon, regardless of what game they are native to. Now, with all that being said, these Pokemon are very, very strong, but I have a pretty good strategy to be able to take them down, and I'm going to show that to you right now. Now, without a doubt, one of the best Pokemon you can use to take both of these down is going to be Houndoom. Now, thanks to its Dark and Fire typing, it's actually really, really perfect here, because both Pokemon are going to have either a Ghost or Psychic type attack, and with it being a dark type, it's going to be either immune to psychic or resisting ghost. So in that regard, it's going to have that damage pretty much taken care of. Now, Houndoom also has the ability Flash Fire, which we want to make sure it has. So if either of those Pokemon go for their fire moves, it's not going to do anything at all. For the set I came up with here, I recommend using a maxed out HP and a maxed out special attack and giving it a modest nature just to up its damage that much more. Also for Terra typing, we want to give it a dark Terra type and the held item Black Glasses, making those dark type attacks just 20% stronger. Now the reason we want to do that is because we are going to be unleashing a lot of Dark Pulses. We have Nasty Plot and Dark Pulse here as our two main moves. Now we do need to finish off kind of the rest of the moves on the set, so I went with Hyper Voice and Sludge Bomb. Now as I mentioned in the intro there, these two Pokemon can change their types, they can show up as any random typing you could ever think of. So we need to kind of come up with a way where we can do either super effective damage to them or just generally really good neutral damage, depending on what shows up. So the way we're really going to be strategizing this is figuring out whatever can take those attacks and then kind of working backwards from there and figuring out how we can do the most amount of damage to the most amount of Pokemon. Now here, 95% of the time, you're just going to be using Dark Pulse. Really, just don't worry about it. Just go ahead and use that unless you have a specific reason not to. But if you do happen to run into something that resists Dark, we do need to have an option for that which is why we have that Hyper Voice. It's kind of just a generally good move to have. It'll do a lot of damage, so you really don't have to worry about using it too often. But if you do find yourself in a situation where Drug Pulse is not going to get there, go ahead and use that instead. Sludge Bomb is really here exclusively for Fairy-type Pokemon if it does have a Fairy-type. A fairy Terra type is actually not bad on both these Pokemon, and some people are going to want it because Fairy is a very overpowered type in general. And you're going to need a way to really take those Pokemon down because Dark-type is not going to work there. And being able to use Sludge Bomb, it's going to be super effective and is really just kind of a nice option to have in your back pocket. Now, you may be noticing a theme with these Pokemon, and that's that a lot of them are going to be Dark type because honestly, it covers both of them so well defensively, it makes no sense not to use them. Now, the second Pokemon we're going to talk about is going to be Greninja. And I have a lot of very unorthodox choices here, but bear with me, they make sense. Now, the first thing that you've probably noticed is that we don't have Protean on the set, we have Torrent. Now, the reason for that is we want to really keep both the Dark and Water typing the entire time. 
With Protean, as soon as you use one of the moves on here, like Sword Dance, it's going to lose that dual typing, which resists both of these Pokemon stabs. So we really don't want to do that. And if we have the chance to just make our water moves that much stronger, I'm all for it. Now for its held item, we are going to go ahead with Leftovers again. And really the reasoning here is just because Greninja is not a very bulky Pokemon. If you have it at level 100, it's going to be able to take a decent amount of hits. But because it's more fragile, those hits are going to add up a little more faster than like something with a Houndoom. We need to kind of be a little more strategic and add up a little more HP over the course of the battle. So I think Leftovers are going to be a really good choice here. <clears throat> Now, I did go Terra-type Water. You could easily go Dark as well. I just think Liquidation here is a very good option, but I'm not really married to it. So if you have that Greninja from the Raid event, if you go ahead and make it either Water or Dark, either of those are going to be really great options for you. Now, we are going Physical here, which you're going to be seeing why in just a moment, but I am going to be maxing out my HP and my Attack stat and giving it an Adamant Nature just again to maximize the damage output. And the reason we're going Adamant is so we can take advantage of Swords Dance. Typically in raids, when you want to solo them, you need to get your attack stats as high as possible so you can do one big hit. Swords Dance, you can get two or three of those off and do a lot of damage, which is why I think it's fantastic here. Now, as far as the actual attacking moves, we want dual stabs so we can cover kind of whatever comes up. So things like Liquidation and Night Slash are going to be really awesome because water is not resisted by that many things, so it's going to be a very good attack. And Night Slash, again, is just a very solid dark type attack that can do a lot of damage to both of them. And it's just, again, a good choice to have on you. And speaking of another Leftovers user, I want to talk about Hydreigon. Now, Hydreigon is very good for pretty much the same reasons as Greninja and Houndoom, being that it's going to have that Dark Typing, which is already great, which we talked about, but it's also going to have that Dragon Typing, so it's going to resist fire on top of that. Now, again, I went Leftovers here because Hydreigon already has pretty good offensive stats. It already has a very good special attack. So once we get those Nasty Plots off and we're able to raise that pretty high, we don't really need to worry about going any higher with like a black glasses or something. We're going to be able to take it out no problem. So I just want to give it more longevity to make sure we can get all those boosts off, which is why I went leftovers. Now, EVs in nature, I just went max special attack and max HP. A modest nature, again, to boost the damage output. But for Terra, I went dark or steel. Either one is fine. I think dark is probably going to be better because you have the stab and you get a little more damage off just to make it that much more powerful. But if you are worried or you want to try and get one as a fairy, go ahead and get Steel just so you do have that super effective move that you can use on it. Now, as for our attacks, we have Nasty Plot with Dragon Pulse and Dark Pulse. Again, not really inventing the wheel here. We do have Nasty Plot to give us plus two special attack, and then we have our dual stabs, really just to kind of do a lot of neutral damage to a lot of things. And if we do have the opportunity to do a lot of super effective damage, it's just going to be that much more amazing. For the final move, I went with Flash Cannon here. If you're not crazy about it, there are other options, but I just think it's solid. And, you know, if you do run into those Fairy-type Pokemon, you're going to be able to take it out pretty easily with that. So, kind of use whatever you want. But this is just my suggestion based on what people may want from these raids. Now, moving on to another Pokemon with the exact same typing, I want to talk about Roaring Moon. Now, Roaring Moon is going to be a physical attacker, unlike Hydreigon's special attacker. And it's going to operate a little differently. Now, much like what we've had so far, we are going to want to use max attack, max HP with an adamant nature to maximize our damage output. But here, we are going to have a booster energy as its item. So you can really take advantage of its protosynthesis, which will give it an extra attack boost, making it that much stronger. Now, unfortunately, Roaring Moon does not have access to Swords Dance, so we are going to have to use Dragon Dance as our boosting move. If we are able to get these Pokemon with a type that's weak to either Dragon or Dark, we're going to be in a pretty good situation to do a lot of damage, even if it doesn't have a lot of boosts. I think you would generally want to get off two or three Dragon Dances to get to plus two or plus three attack or even plus four. And if you're able to do that, you can do quite a lot of damage pretty quickly that should really help you kind of knock these pokemon out a lot faster we have crunch and outrage for our two attacks the reason i went with outrage is because you really do need that extra kind of boost of power and honestly once you're going ahead and starting to attack you really are just going to keep hitting that attack button anyway so i don't really see a reason not to use outrage especially if you're going to be one hit KOing things most of the time and coming up on yet another kind of different approach here, we are going to be going back to the fire and dark typing. However, here we're going to be using Chi Yu. Now, I like Chi Yu quite a bit because basically we're going to be trading in that flash fire for more firepower here with this legendary. Now, in terms of the held item and things like the Terra type and even the stats, it's pretty much an exact copy of Houndoom. We have black glasses, max special attack, max HP, and of course we have a Moss Nature to really just juice up that power as much as possible. And we have a dark Terra typing here as well. And then it's going to be a very similar strategy here because we're going to be, again, using Nasty Plot very much the way we would before. And we have the moves Dark Pulse and Psychic to take advantage of those. Once you get to that plus six, 
on top of the fact that Chiyu is going to be reducing their special defense, it's going to do so much damage, even though it's not stab, that you're going to be really fine. And now coming up to our very last Pokemon here, we finally have a Pokemon that's not Dark type, and that is going to be Farigarath. Now Farigarath is kind of unique because it is Psychic and Normal type, and even though it doesn't resist fire, it is going to be immune to Ghost and resisting Psychic. So it's able to cover some of those big stab moves, which is great. There is a really good chance you may get hit by a fire type move, which is a little bit less ideal. But still, I think this Pokemon does have a lot going for it. Primarily the fact that it has the ability to cut you. So if you eat a berry on the following turn, you're going to eat that berry again. So for our held item, we have a citrus berry. Now the reason this is really cool is because if you eat it and then eat it again, there's a really good chance if you take a lot of damage, you're going to get all the way back up to your full HP, giving you just that much more longevity in battle, which I think is really fantastic. Now, as far as EVs and the kind of our stats go, we have 252 HP, 252 Special Attack, and a Modest Nature. This is really going to help with longevity and maxing out our damage, kind of the way we've had before. But what I really want to talk about is the Terra Typing and the moves, because we have a little bit of a different approach here. We are using Nasty Plot much in the way we have before, but here we're also going to be using Psychic and Hyper Voice as our dual stab attacks. So, Normal Type Attacks and Psychic Type Attacks cover almost everything you're going to run into, for just neutral damage or super effective, which is really, really great. The one thing I was a bit worried about, though, is if you run into something like a Dark or Steel type, that can pose a little bit of options. So I did go Dazzling Gleam for the very last spot here, mainly to get rid of those, like, Dark type Pokemon. You are going to have trouble with Steel type Pokemon, which I don't really like about this particular set. That being said, though, if you do have a Steel type, you're still going to do a lot of damage to it, even if you're soloing it, because you are going to be at plus six, presumably. And with the fact that you're going to be doing a lot of damage and recycling those citrus berries, your Pokemon's going to hang in there pretty well. So I really don't think you have to worry about, you know, not getting enough damage off in time. Because again, these are only four and five star raids. So I think you're going to be fine given this set. And that is kind of a corner case issue. So I don't think you have to worry too much. But now with that said, the raid is going on right now. So I'm going to grab a couple of these, hop in and show you guys exactly how powerful these sets are and how you can solo these Pokemon by yourself very easily. All right, so here we are. I actually found a Sarah Ledge raid just in my game here. It is a four star. So let's go ahead. We're going to challenge it alone. But first, I have to change my Pokemon. We are going to use our Houndoom that I highly recommend. And we're going to go ahead and just challenge it alone. We'll have three NPCs helping us out. I believe that is Steel type, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll go ahead and see how this does. I'm not too worried about it. I think we got this one in the bag. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what to do. We're going to go ahead and just start nasty plotting up. We do want to get up to plus six. So we are going to need to do three, but again, I don't think it's going to be that bad. And let's see how good we get here. Night Slash didn't do anything. Okay, yeah, we have now officially taken this thing out. All right, now I managed to find another Sarah Ledge in my game. Online was being pretty slow, so I wanted to make sure I showed you guys as many as I could. I'm going to go ahead and change my Pokemon to our Hydreigon. And then I'm going to go ahead and just challenge this thing alone, because again, it has no ice moves, so we don't have to really worry about it being super effective against Hydreigon. Because we have that move Flash Cannon, we are going to actually have a super effective move against it. So I think we're actually going to be able to do quite a lot to it, so I'm pretty eager to show you how good this is going to be. We're going to go ahead and use Nasty Plot right away. We want to get to at least plus four. And then now with us being at plus four, I'm going to go ahead and just Flash Cannon and see how much damage we do. Now it is super effective, so... Okay, well, there you go. We're able to do that much damage to it just in one shot, so... That really is the power of having a configuration like this. All right, so there you guys have it. That is six builds you can use right now to solo either the Armor Rouge or Sarah Lodge events that are going on right now. Now, do remember, you only really have two days to actually get all these Pokemon. After that, they are going to be gone, and you'll have to go back to the old evolution methods to get them. So make sure you guys get them while you're able to. I don't want you guys to miss out on this. It is a great opportunity to get both. As long as you have online, just go on there and find whatever one you want from the other game, and you'll be able to add both of these awesome night Pokemon to your Scarlet or Violet games. That being said, everybody, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, but most importantly, I hope you found it helpful, and you're able to use it to get as many of these Pokemon as you want. If you were able to use this video to some degree of success, please make sure that you absolutely giga impact that like button in the face, and of course, consider subscribing, because again, it really does help us out, as we are a channel that is still growing, and of course, you'll make sure you never miss any of our awesome videos just like this one, so thanks in advance. So that being said, everybody, please remember that the best Pokemon games are the ones that you love to play, and the proper ways to play them are however you have the most fun. I hope each and every one of you have a happy, epic, awesome, and amazing day, and I will see you in the next video. See you around. Bye-bye.